And now I'm going back over and I'm laying out my my clear nail polish on this one. And I figured I'd do, you know, part of it with the nail polish and part of it with fray check. And then that way we can see as I field test it how they both hold up. So we'll do that. We'll go ahead and get it cut out. Uh, first I'll do the nail polish and then I'll let it dry and then I'll cut it all out. So I'll see you guys in a while. So I've got my first row of clear nail polish on, on there and it's dried really nice. So um, I like this option. So now I'm going to do the next line with fray check and just see see what the difference is. So with the fray check, I've got a almost all the way empty bottle here that I've had for quite a while. Um, as you can tell, because it's all gummed up. Uh, let's see if it's going to work here. I'm going to have to unplug it. Oh no, that's good. Okay, so I can just go right along here. And since this is just an edge, I don't really need to be that careful about being all perfect and careful and blah blah blah. I sure do like uh, Fray Check. I have used it for quite a long time. It's really good stuff. The only thing is I must have gotten some bad batch somewhere because I did have it at one time it did wash out on me and ever since then I've been kind of leery of using it but uh, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's just your standard fray check. They sell it at any sewing place, fabric store, Joann's, any of those. Um, and you can also get them usually at a craft store too. Well, okay, so I'm done with my fray check now. Um, as far as ease of use goes, I have to say I'm liking the fray check better. Um, it was a, you know, a lot easier for me to apply when I'm really quickly. I don't know how long it's going to take it to dry, because um, usually when I, when I apply it, I've already got everything all cut out and stuff. So. You know, usually I use it for like, you know, necks and arms and things like that. So, um, anyway, so I guess I'm just going to wait. Um, the other thing I don't like about the, uh, the nail polish is that, um, I think I started going a little bit, uh, getting a little bit high when I was putting it on. It takes a lot longer, uh, with the brush. Um, uh, but like I said, I, I had, you know, even though I had the windows open, I was getting kind of high. And it took a very long time just to do this one. Uh, row here, whereas with the fray check I did all of those in maybe a fifth of the time uh, that it took me to do this one. So uh, that's that's definitely pluses in favor for uh, fray check. But uh, we will see how things go once this gets all dry and uh, I get it all cut out. So stay tuned. <music> Okay, so we're finally all dry. It took the fray check a long time to dry, so that would be a con of using the uh, the fray check. I think, uh, as far as overall time that it takes, I think actually that the um, nail polish may be faster. It depend. It probably would depend on how many of these I'm going to do, and you know how big my fabric would be, and all that stuff too. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and start cutting this out. So now we got this all laid out, right? The next thing that you want to do is grab it right here. Take it, you go like that, okay, and then you take your, just like that, rotate it like it's going to be, and then you want to line this seam up, or this first line up, with the very edge of the back underside fabric there. And I'm going to end up doing about a half an inch uh, seam there, so. So just to give you a close up of what I'm doing here. Um, Here's, here's just so you can see what I'm doing here. So our uh, back, this is the, the line that we want to follow, right? So, and we want to overlap one uh, width of our bias. So what you do is, I'm going to be lining up because I'm going to be stitching here, right? So what I'm doing is, you can see, here's the mark here, right? And so that's going to be a little bit far, so I'll pull it back down. And I'm going to be about there, so you, I don't know if you can see this or not, but the uh, background fabric is hitting like right here. So if I'm doing about a half an inch uh, seam allowance, I'm going to intersect right there. So that should be spot on uh, for me there. So, so I'm not lining up like this, which would be right at the corner there, because then my lines are going to be off. What I want to do is offset it so that the lines will hit perfectly there. So that's where I'm going to do. So that's where I'm going to start my 
stitched right there. Okay? Hopefully you can see that okay. I'm going to start my stitch right there. So I've offset again. So like I said, you basically move the fabric this way. So your half, half, half inch stitch will hit right there. That is what it will look like on the other side. This is what it looks like on this side. So now I'm going to go stitch it. Okay, so I have my, um, got my tube. It's, uh, you can see it's a, it's a good bias tube. This is the seam that I just sewed. Feels a little awkward when you line it all up, but once you get it stitched in, it all lines up. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and press this open, just like I do all my other seams. So that way when I cut everything out, it's going to be all nice and flat. The only thing I'm going to have to do is add a little bit of fray check right here um, on these spots where I'm going to hit uh, when I cut. So, so what you do, let me roll this a little bit so you can see. You can see I have a, I have a little bit of an offset here. So that will be where I'll start and I'll just go around and then it's just like a, like a barber shop pole, basically, or a candy cane. You just follow it around, all the way around, and cut, 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 cut until you get to the very bottom, and we should have uh, several yards of this stuff. Um, well, actually, probably not several yards, but a couple, so that'll be good. So there it is. Voila. So I will see you tomorrow for cut more cutting. So I've gone ahead and I've cut out that tube uh, based off of the lines that we drew. And what you want to do is you want to take, um, so I've marked, you, you'll notice here I've marked in the middle. Um, and what you want to do is you want to take both sides and you'll fold them over towards the middle like so. And then you'll go ahead and you'll press that down, okay? And then when you get done pressing that down, then you want to go ahead and fold it over in half like that. And then you press that down. And that gives you a nice, uh, nice edge there uh, for your, uh, your hammock. Uh, and then what you do, um, I'm actually going to show you a trick for how you sew it on. So let's go over and do that. So we have our bias tape here, which we have pressed, although it's starting to get flat again, which that's pretty normal. And so what's going to happen is it's going to end up going just like this and then being folded in half like that. And what it's going to do is it's going to go right over here like this. Okay? So you know, I could uh, I could try to pin it so it's exactly the same on both sides, which is a pain to do. Or I could do this trick that I learned. So this is a trick I learned when I'm when you're putting on um, waistbands or uh, collars on shirts or wrist cuffs. What you do is you go ahead and you lay it out like this, and you're gonna go ahead and sew right on that quarter mark right there. Okay. And you, you do that the whole way down, okay? So I'm going to reverse this so I can do it, do it the right way. But basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be sewing right on that line the whole way down. And what happens is then when you fold it over, you've got the perfect guide on the other side for that. So I'm going to go ahead and get this lined out. I'm going to have to flip it around, like I said, to get it to work. Okay, I just uh, went ahead and reversed it here. So um, I've got the edge that I'm going to be sewing it on. I've got it lined out here like so. And again, like I said, I'm going to be sewing right on this quarter mark here, uh, which it's technically a half inch in, but it's a quarter of the uh, four marks you got here. Okay, so um, I've gone and uh, got it stitched like we said. So the next step that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and fold uh, this over just like we have it here. And fold it over like that. And then what we'll be doing is we'll actually be stitching it uh, on the opposite side. So the, the trick, though, is that what you want to do is when you get your fold, um, you can see where the stitch is on the underside here from, from the other side. So you can see the stitch right here, right? So what you want to do is we get the, when you get this folded over and on this side, you actually want to line yourself up exactly on that line. And that way you know when you're stitching through this one, you're going to hit the other one because of where the stitch is on that side. So it's a pretty neat, uh, pretty slick little trick there. Like I said, it's uh, used typically for putting on waistbands and things like that, but it works great for bias tape as well. So I'm going to go ahead and work on getting this stitched down right along there, and I'll show you what it looks like when I get done. Okay, so here we go. Here is how the bias tape turned out. 
Oh, it looks pretty good, I think. Um, yeah. Well, let me kind of pull up here. I'll flip it over and you can kind of see how it turned out there. So, um, so yeah, it's a pretty nifty trick, that trick. Um, works pretty good for lining everything up, which I really enjoy. Um, and you can do this with any, any bias, bias tape. You can do it with bias tape that you buy at the store or bias tape that you make on your own. So, yay!